The following is a non-profit reading of How the Grinch Stole Christmas by Dr. Seuss. All elements belong to Universal and the respectful companies that own the copyright. This is for entertainment purposes only. Please support the official release. Every who doubted Whoville liked Christmas a lot. But the Grinch, who lived just north of Whoville, did not. The Grinch ate at Christmas the whole Christmas season. Now, please don't ask why. No one quite knows the reason. It could be his head wasn't screwed on just right. It could be, perhaps, that his shoes were too tight. But I think the most likely reason of all may have been that his heart was two sizes too small. But whatever the reason, the heart or his shoes, he stood there on Christmas Eve, taking the hoes, staring down from his cave with his sour grinchy frown at the warm-hearted light, at the warm-lighted windows below in their town. For he knew every who down in Whoville beneath was busy now hanging a mistletoe wreath. And the hanging their stockings, he snarled with a sneer, tomorrow's Christmas. It's practically here. Then he growled with his grinsy fingers nervously drumming. I must find a way to stop Christmas from coming. For tomorrow, he knew. All the Who boys and girls would wake bright and early. They'd rush for their toys and then all the noise. Oh, the noise, 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 noise. That's one thing he hated. The noise, 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 noise. Then the Who's young and old would sit down to a feast. And they'd feast, and they'd feast, and they'd feast, 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 feast. They, they would feast on wood pudding and rare Who roast feast, which was something that the Grinch could not stand in the least. Then they'd do something he'd like least of all. Every who down in Whoville, the tall and the small, would stand close together with Christmas bells ringing. They'd stand hand in hand, and the who's would start singing. And they'd sing, and they'd sing, and they'd sing, 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 sing. And the more the great start of this who Christmas sing, the more the great start, I must stop this whole thing. I for fifty-three years I put up with it now. I must stop it. I must stop this Christmas from coming. But how? Then the Grinch got an idea. An awful idea. The Grinch got a wonderful, awful idea. I know just what to do. The Grinch laughed in his throat. And he made a good Santa Claus hat and a coat. And he chuckled in cloak. <clears throat> and he chuckled and clucked. What a great Grinchy trick. With this coat and his hat, I look just like Saint Nick. And yeah, all I need is a reindeer. The Grinch looked around. But since reindeer was scarce, there was none to be found. Did that stop the Grinch? No. The Grinch simply said, If I can't find a reindeer, I'll make one instead. So he called his dog Max. Then he took some red thread, and he tied a big horn on the top of his head. Then he loaded some bags and some old empty sacks on a ramshack sleigh, and he hitched up old Max. Then the Grinch said, Giddy up! And the sleigh started down toward the homes where the Who's lay a snooze in their town. All the windows were dark, quiet filled the air, all the Who's were all dreaming, sweet dreams without care. When he came to the first little house on the square, This is dot number one, the old Grinch called his, and he climbed to the roof, empty bags in his fist. Then he slid down the chimney, a rather tight pinch, but if Santa could do it, then so could the Grinch. He got stuck only once, for a moment or two. And then he 
stuck out his head, and the fireplace flew. With a little hoo stockings all hanging a row. These stockings, he grinned, are the first things to go. Then he slithered and slunk with a smile most unpleasant. Around the whole room, he took every present. Pop guns, bicycles, roller skates, drums, checkerboards, triangles, popcorn, and plums. And he stuffed them in bags. Then the Grinch, very nimbly, stuffed all the bags one by one up the chimney. Then he slunk to the icebox. He took the hoop feast. He took the hoop pudding. He took the who roast beast. He cleaned the icebox as quick as a flash. Why, that Grinch even took the last can of who hash. Then he stuffed all the food up the chimney with glee. And now, grinned the Grinch, I will stuff up the tree. And the Grinch grabbed the tree, and he started to shove, when he heard a small sound of the coo of a dove. He turned around fast, and he saw a small who, little city loo, who was no more than two. The Grinch had been caught by this little who daughter, who got out of bed for a cup of cold water. Why, she stared at the Grinch and said, Santa Claus? Why? Why are you taking our Christmas tree? Why? But you know that old Grinch. He was smart and he was slick. He thought of a line and he thought of a quick. Why, my little, sweet little tot, the thick Santa Claus lied. There's a light on this tree, that old light on one side. So I'm taking it back to my workshop, I hear. I'll fix it up there. And I'll bring it back here. And this fib fooled the child. Then he patted her head. He got her a drink. And he sent her to bed. And when Sidney Lou Who went to bed with her cup, he went to the tree and stuffed the tree up. <clears throat> then the last thing he took was a log for that fire. And he went up to the chimney himself, the old liar. On their walls was left nothing but hooks and some wire. And the only speck of food that he left in the house was a crop that was even too small for a mouse. Then he did the same thing to the other who houses, leaving crumbs much too small for the other who's mouses. It was quarter to dawn, it was quarter past dawn, all the who's still in bed, all the who's still a snooze when he packed up his sled, packed it up with their presents, their ribbons, their wrappings, their tags, all the tinsel, all the wrappings, and the trappings. Three thousand feet up, up the side of Mount Crumpet, he rode up his sleigh to the tip top to dump it. Poo poo to the who's. He was graciously humming. They're finding out now that no Christmas is coming. They're just waking up now. I don't just what they'll do. Their, hound, their, their mouths will hang open for a moment or two. Then the who's down in Whoville will all cry, Foo hoo! That's a noise, grinned the Grinch, that I simply must hear. So he paused, and the Grinch put his hand to his ear. And he did hear sound. Rising over the snow, it started in low, and it started to grow. But the sad, the sound wasn't sad. Why, this sounded merry. It couldn't be so. But it was merry. Merry. He started, he stared down at Whoville. The Grinch popped his eyes. Then he shook. What he saw was a shocking surprise. Every who down in Whoville, tall and small, was singing without any presents at all. He had stopped Christmas from coming, it came. Somehow or other, it came just the same. And the Grinch, with his gritty feet ice cold, ice cold in the snow, stood puzzling and puzzling. How could it be so? It came without ribbons. It came without 
Red tag, tags. It came without packages, boxes, or bags. And he puzzled three hours till his puzzler was sore. Then the Grinch thought of something he hadn't before. Maybe Christmas, he thought, doesn't come from a store. Maybe Christmas, perhaps, means a little bit more. And it happened then. Well, in Whoville, they say, that the, Grinch, that the Grinch's hot, small heart grew three sizes that day. And that minute his heart didn't feel quite so tight. He wheezed with a he wheezed with the load through the bright morning light, and he brought back the toys and the food for the feast. And he himself, the Grinch, carved the roast beast. I hope you enjoyed that. I love that story about a cruel Grinch man finding the spirit of Christmas just at the last moment. There's only hmm, two days till Christmas. Have you been good? <laughs> Leave it in the comment section if you have a comment or if you have a creepy pasta you want me to read, and I'll be sure to read it as well as soon as I can. Two days till Christmas. Let's hear the requests. Until then, everyone, this is the Smiling Merchant, bringing you all the fondest of adieus.